Hello, Hermina. My Hi. pleasure to have you at Faces yes. of Armenia today. Nice to meet you. And to kick things off, maybe can you share a little bit about yourself, your narrative, your story, where you came from, what yeah. makes you... I'm Hermine. I'm a typical Armenian girl. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in Yerevan in uh, last century, <laughs> <laughs> yes, typically. Uh, my uh, parents immigrant here from Russia mm -hmm. and I'm happy that I'm born here. Uh, I prefer to uh, apply the university in architecture and construction and um, I prefer to combine economic and engineering. Um, and I love Armenia. Okay, like I, I really like this aspect where you said that you love Armenia. Yeah. But I think it's a process that develops. So yeah. can you tell me a little bit about your childhood when you grew yeah. up? When did you first have a sense for being Armenian? When did you discover with your heart and soul Armenia? How was it to grow up in Armenia, within, Ar so to speak, in this Armenian yes. community? How did did this unleash the love for Armenia? For me, it's really hard because my, as I say, my parents is immigrant for mm -hmm. Russian and I speak Russian mm -hmm. and my uh, friends taught me uh, Armenian and I... S okay, but it's a very, very interesting topic because I think many other Armenians share your history. Yes, being like share, share, they're sharing me with their knowledges, with their traditional, with mm -hmm. how can uh, Mm, I um, how can I uh, live in the yard? How can I plan? Which typical game they have? Because we have a different traditional, different social environment. But uh, I think not. I'm not not so active person mm. in childhood. That's why I'm just only um, learn some new words in Armenian, new environment, new dishes. I try, uh, and I finish Armenian school. But it's really hard for me. Okay, so you were really um, educated from your parents yeah. as a Russian girl, yeah. so to speak. Did you have a hard time like integrating into Armenian life? Finding yes, Armenian sometimes life? yes, because I even I don't know Armenian languages as well as Russian. But after some uh, classes, uh, mm. I start Armenian well and I am integrate the environment as well as I can. Mm. Because I'm not so active person in life. <laughs> But my friends and family helped me. Okay, yes. how did they help you? They give me information, they mm. give me a book, a lot of films, a lot of attractive games in the art I played. Uh, and we traveled a lot in Armenia. Throughout Armenia? Yes, through Armenia, yes. We went to Sevan, Akhazor, the, the every typical villages, um, test their food, te test their, <laughs> I don't know, environment and musics I like also. Um, and so can you tell me how are the different villages different? Do you yeah. see there's a real distinct cultural difference within Armenia? Uh, what is the uh, general for me they're all open for new people mm -hmm. it's it will be it's really helped me uh, and uh, they're all try to be positive for me for my parents and they're not so different you know mm -hmm. there's uh, they're all Armenian <laughs> These um, experiences going from yeah. city to city, from village yeah. to village, um, what did it make with you? What, what kind of emotions were released um, back when you did it as a kid, when you were transitioning? I just discovered Armenia in the other point of view, because Yerevan, it's not all Armenia. Mm -hmm. They give me advice, they give me some gifts, uh, some handmade cookies, etc. And this is a really warm environment for me. I just recognize that uh, Armenian is a really warm country for me. So then, right now, do you consider yourself more Armenian or more Russian? Totally Armenian. <laughs> okay, and when did this awareness start? When did you start to say, you know what, I am Armenian? Yeah, when I, end, uh, when I applied the university. Okay, please yes, share about share, this Yes, because I have a... Uh, um, two uh, way, for example, way. The first point is I will go to back to Russian and 
continue my education, but I decided to live here and start my education in here. And my best friends helped me a lot. Uh, Armenian best yeah, friend? Yeah, Armenian best friend. She uh, gave me a lot of materials, uh, books, uh, a lot of um, information about the universities, which one you prefer. Mm -hmm. uh, she helped me to prepare the exams uh, and she do a lot for me, you know, really. And I applied to university, the, the all uh, subject totally in Armenian. It's really mm -hmm. hard for me, but I passed this. <laughs> the point and now I'm totally f that I'm Armenian. I'm Armenian typical girl. <laughs> oh, so it, it, to me it um, goes back somehow that the critical element for you becoming Armenian was really friendship. Yeah. So can you describe what because, makes an Armenian friendship Because when special? you ask someone to show you to for how can I go there, for example, to the opera or to, they all open, they answer you, no, not like typical Russian, I don't know, and pass, I don't know, and pass. <laughs> they are so open, they are, can give you money, can give you suggest, it's, they are so warm. And this is the point that I turned <laughs> my future and I'm here. And so, like, d meaning you went often also to Russia and you experienced this coldness to other countries and there was not really this help. And when you're here, yeah. it like really makes you feel I'm at home because really hospitality. People are open yes. and kind. Open, open kind, but the main point there is so, uh, they help you. And but sometimes they give you money, but not give you opportunity to work and to for your job to get money. Ah, okay, I okay. understand. And so now it's an interesting question. You were accepted to university. Yeah. You studied hard for the entrance <laughs> exam. Somehow made it. Yeah. What then? I mean, it's the next four years. I think were formative. Can you let us know a little bit about? Yes, I, when I graduated my main university, architecture and construction, uh, my supervisor advised me to be a lecturer mm -hmm. and a professor assistant. Uh, and I applied my university and now I'm more than 10 years lecturer in my university. My subject is project management. And uh, I work with uh, foreign students also, <laughs> with Russian students, <laughs> because it's good for me. But my, uh, the second part of my life is work with uh, work like a volunteer and work for other programs because I like the flexible life and flexible mm. schedule. But you know, it's not typical for Armenian. They like to uh, concentrate for one job, but I like to do <laughs> everything with everyone. And I applied to U American University in the program with... with so, with, the way yes. you, you being very flexible and open and... Yes. Yeah. Does it have something to do with you being Russian or...? Maybe yes, you know, because I never say no. If you are say you have, I have a project, can you help me? I say yes, because maybe my friends, maybe it's a childhood something that I remember then when I ask question about how can I write this verb, how can I go there, they always help me. Maybe this emotion <laughs> bring me here. And uh, I applied the American University uh, in British Council program, mm -hmm. get ready to innovate Armenian as a mentor. Then I shift as a project coordinator. And now we have a second program, which is then a startup mentor matching network. We match starters and mentors. I'm also their project coordinator. I travel a lot during my professional life. But every time I come back Yerevan, <laughs> oh, yes. and not just Yerevan, I love Gyumri, uh, Tzachkadzor, Sevan, more than Yerevan. So there's an interesting aspect that you mentioned, that you work with a number of Russian students together. Yeah. So do you see any similarities between their situation, their narrative, their thinking, and you yourself, or you as a teenager? Uh, they just think that it's a good opportunity to get knowledge and come back to Russian. Mm -hmm. It's not the same situation like me, that I want to be Armenian and work Armenian here. That just a um, bridge to get knowledge and come back Russian. There is a totally different situation. And do you think that's actually a 
good way to behave? Uh, is it good for the society? Yes, because... So can Armenians learn from them? Yes, because Armenian can work with group. It's a good mm -hmm. point to work with foreign groups, work with foreign students. It's good, I think, yeah, to discover I... new environment. Indeed, but do you think also in the way, of course, I think diversity in the classroom is yes. very important. Yeah. But do you believe then the Armenians look at their, their Russian peers and they say, oh, they come here for a year, go back, learned a lot, maybe I should go to Russia, Russia, to Australia for one year and then come back. Are you supportive of such a trend or not so much? Uh, yeah, it's happened, but for Armenians, we are not believe a positive opportunity. <laughs> Maybe. No. Not I, but many, most of my students. They just want to work, get money, work, get money in Armenian just. But they not have to start work and work hard for a positive future, sometimes. <laughs> okay, so like, how is it for you to work with many young people? Yeah. And over the last 10 years that you were a yeah. lecturer, yeah. Um, how did the perspectives of your students change? Uh, just we have a positive changes in our university, in the, both in our American university. They start prepare a lot to apply for some programs, some Erasmus programs, some and abroad programs. But they don't believe that it's happened with them. The magic will happen with them. They believe that the magic is happening with them, or they just think they just do it, but for no avail. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. If you are work hard, the magic will happen. But sometimes they have to earn money for their family, for their um, friends, etc. And now they are not so uh, open to uh, learn a lot. They prefer work than to study. So sometimes. How do you see your responsibility as both a lecturer and a mentor? Yeah. What yeah. can you give your students? Uh, just Go risk, apply for every program, mm -hmm. <laughs> prepare a lot of materials, apply for 10 and maybe one you, are, you will want. And uh, do you see many students taking, following your lead, taking your advice? Yes, because now they are open and now, now they are flexible. They take a course, online courses, they have uh, friends, they, they prefer to work online to work freelance in their home and it is, I think it's a good point. So you see, the, uh, do you believe there's a push, a change towards yes. being more br uh, br uh, br broad? Yeah, think abroad. <laughs> yeah. Think like, try here, yes. try there, yes. volunteer freelance. Yeah. It's really hard, but, it's, but I believe it's like it can... Yes, open slowly. Opens, yes. Because, uh, especially in Yerevan, they prefer to... Um, just travel in Russian and do other work, just services, just mm -hmm. not work in their professional work. Yeah. And so you say, especially in Yerevan, how is yeah. it different in other cities in Armenia? Because other cities, I think they want to move Yerevan, just not to move Russian or... Ah, Yerevan. okay, yes. okay, okay. So Yerevan is already more at a prime position. Yeah. I, I think so. <laughs> yeah. And like the other cities are more like yeah. in a uh, pro provincial yeah. perspective. Okay, so now that we well understand mm -hmm. like your perspectives <laughs> and roles at the um, University of Architecture mm -hmm. and Construction. Yes, construction. What other feeds, projects and activities can you call your own here in Armenia? I want to make uh, other lives happy, happy mm -hmm. and I want to help them to feel free. I just want to uh, suggest them that if you want, you can fly. Yes. Yes, but you uh, have to ha work hard uh, and you have to learn a lot about the, your history because your good point is your history, your core, I think. So, yeah, and you mentioned at what other university or project were you working? Just American University with the oh. U.S. Embassy, we do the startup mentor uh, matching network. And what interested you in this program and uh, why do you believe you are a good fit 
there? I'm interesting because I like work with team mm -hmm. and there are more than um, 20 startups. We find the mentors and we match them and uh, they work together and after we have a success stories and we share with the other startups that is so working then, process. Please, 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 can you share a success story with us? <laughs> For example, they start with the other idea, now they change their idea, they are so flexible. It's not typical for Armenian to change their idea. If they are get married with one wife, <laughs> it's fall other. Than... <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are not so flexible and they don't like really to work with team. But I think it's a good point so to teach the them. And that program helps yes. them to think differently, to say, yes. bad idea, move yes. on. Do an yes. iteration. There. Think out of thinking. box, yes. Just think out of box. Okay, and so since how many years have you been working in the matching program? One year. Just one year. And based on that, you also, if I'm correctly informed, got into yes. British Council? Yeah, because British Council mm. work with this project, yeah? Okay, c can you let us a little bit n know more about how the British Council is involved and um, yeah. like in, in, in which capacity? Just there have a lot of materials, mm. Armenian materials. Uh, and they translate materials, for example, the tutorials, the videos, they are uh, so organized. You teach them also yes. In, in Armenian, not in English. Not in English. Ah, oh, okay. There, I think their main point to uh, give the opportunity to uh, Armenian people to get knowledge about British and British uh, uh, about British about, about British environment and mm -hmm. British uh, society to and. Um, uh, how I say, mm, just true in Armenian languages, yes. And because they organize a lot of per performance, yes, in Armenian. But it's, they mix cultures. So do you think is this mixing of cultures important? Do you think it's a positive development that mm. international organizations yes. such as the British yes. Council come in here? I think yes, because Armenian have a strong uh, vision how, what they can do, but how they can do, I think the uh, other nation can help them. Yes, uh, so sometimes you know what can we, w what we want, mm -hmm. but how can we realize in real life? It's really hard. So it's really about you see for Armenia to develop, for yeah. Armenia to help its people to prosperity. It's not a unilateral effort, yeah. but it's about engaging your neighbors, seeing what, what can we learn from mm -hmm. the U.S., what are Countries, they good at, yes. what, what is a good example of Singapore, and then try yes. to adapt like a certain adapt. aspect, yes, of and course. then it's a patchwork of best practices. <laughs> yes, to, ma to match all uh, uh, PowerPoints, yeah, mm -hmm. it's good. Okay, and you mentioned you fly quite a lot. So yes. <laughs> Uh, please let us know a little more. During my professional life, I traveled a lot. It's just a business trip. We go to different countries like uh, Spain, Italy, Finland. In educational system, we we know how they work, uh, and we come back and share our knowledges for our students for our lectures. But sometimes the the same model doesn't work in Armenian. We have to change some point of the project. And can you dwell a little bit before we go on the larger yeah. organizational impact, on your personal impact? How was it for you as an Armenian to go to these uh, various other countries, yeah. different cultures, uh, like where you feel like a bold and proud Armenian, where you think, yeah. oh, I like the way they do it differently? Or Sometimes even they didn't know where Armenian is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, but we are open the map and we show them that it's Armenian, we have a, a good architecture point, we have a good um, historical point of that we are the power. <laughs> okay, but like what was your personal emotion going to say Spain, Britain, yeah. and Finland? How, how did you personally feel, interact with this different country? For me it's not a problem. Yeah, but okay, yeah. not a problem, but that's not an emotion. Like, yes. did, did, did you like to immerse yourself in this different food? 
Yes. The conversation with different perspectives. Uh, I think everyone enjoy it because when we go to new country, discover new environment, discover new dishes. <laughs> yeah, it, it's good point to share your knowledge. And every time I say I, I have a T-shirt with the I'm Armenian girl, <laughs> I wear it, and all photos I'm Armenian girl. <laughs> I think it's it's good opportunity to share and share and share. Okay, and now I want to drill more on the organizational perspective. Mm. What did you or your like a delegation, so yeah. to speak, teach the other countries? Do you, do you think that they were genuinely interested in Armenia and Armenian best practices, or they always ask us, teach us how you solve the problem? Because they are so, we have a so hard knowledge about theoretical, not the practical point of view, but the theoretical part of architecture. And they say, how you solve this problem? How this solve? You are so hard. You have enough knowledge about this point. You are go deeper, deeper, deeper. But in real life, we can't realize it. Mm -hmm. And all, every time they say, how it's work, how it's work, tell us, please tell us, please tell us. And we cooperate with this point. We give them idea and they realize that idea. Okay, and then um, on the opposite perspective, yeah. what do you learn from them? Just be open for new opportunities, live today lives, <laughs> uh, make future step by steps, and of course think out of the box. And so, like is this really... If you are a team member, it will, the project will be be better, be better and better. Ah, okay, so so the lesson is also not only um, to apply it on the on a business perspective, yeah. but a personal perspective. That Armenians, if they're open, if they yeah. travel, if they say hello of to the world, they yeah, can learn they are for open. their yes. country. Yes. So you think a prime priority <laughs> for Armenians is to learn to be open, open. yeah, and, and open and advice. flexible for new changes. Ah, yeah. okay. So I think, I mean, it's, it's a great <laughs> task and it's something yeah. one can be very ambitious about. And yeah. I think um, per, being personally mm. interactive with this, you see the change. And I think this drives you forward yeah, to course. go to new heights. Uh, sometimes my, if my students say, I uh, prefer to live alone without my parents, I say, good, live. Earn your money, uh, do your job, earn your money, buy your ticket, go there and discover a new environment, discover new countries. But in traditional Armenian girls maybe don't prefer this. Oh yeah, and do you think it's also our job really to um, go to the traditional yeah. mindset and try to see, hey, how can we change, change. It? which yeah. lever should be pressed? You know, my mission here? it's not to uh, broke the borders, not to broke the Armenian traditional mentality, but to but show them to that, that yes, easy. yes, it's possible. You know, if you smile, <laughs> if you smile, if you open, if you smile, if if you can help the other one, some some days maybe someone can help you. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. That's the, that's the thing. I mean, everything comes back. In yeah, life. give, like give, again, around. give, give, all give. <laughs> <laughs> because all we need is love. Just, yes. <laughs> just, just it. So, in a way, a life, history, experiences, yeah. always about one thing: about the future. Their memories, but we learn from our past. So, what can Armenia learn from it from yes. its past? to move into the future, into the prosperous years, hopefully. Yes. Uh, as I suggest my students, uh, don't believe in future, but believe in positive future. Yes. I like, I like, I <laughs> it's like. a good point. And be open for testing your idea, your project. Be test, get feedback, again test, get feedback, again test, and go to risk. and. Always think positive. Think that if you imagine, it can happen. If you imagine, it can happen. But really think positive. For me, when I come here, you know, I learn Armenian, but my mother and father say, you can do it, you can do it. It's just for you. When you are the, not you are the part of environment, but 
you are the leader of the environment, you are the king or you are the boss and think like, like you can move the people, you can move the uh, your uh, organization. Just yes, taking yes. ownership not yes. only of you, yeah. but your organization yes. and your future. Yes. You are the member of environment and you can lead your environment. Mm, okay, so that brings me to the point, let's, let's do a little exercise. Okay. Um, look into the future, say, next 10 years. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about like one or two or even three of the greatest challenges that you see for Armenia to overcome? Maybe because we have not so open and not so warm neighbors mm -hmm. in geographical point of view, maybe something is happened, but I don't believe that. <laughs> okay, let, yeah. let, let's take this. You mean Nakorno, Nakorno, Karabakh, yes, Kar Kar yes, Azerbaijan, yes. Turkey? Turkey. So maybe, no. maybe, maybe it's happened. Maybe we give more uh, attention to army and no. Mm, more uh, open for knowledges, for new connection with other countries. Maybe we can be more safe. But I don't think it's a good point. Okay, so like we see, there may be an escalation of the conflict. Yes, maybe causing casualties, lives, and the deterioration of already yeah. non-existent bilateral relationships between Azerbaijan, for example. So now, how can we take this very adverse and negative, negative. threatening event and uh, look positively at it? How, how can we reshape this um, in a national, yes. in a mm -hmm. co Armenian context and take it as an asset or as an opportunity? To learn our neighbors' languages, just not uh, languages, just, just uh, how they think. And I think if we can go, if we can see the, the same point of view, maybe it will be better. So please, please elaborate a little bit. For example, uh, do a matching program with Turkish students. Yes. Yes. They have one project, for example, build a kindergarten. The second floor uh, project, uh, Turkish student, the first floor Project Armenian student. It's a magic program, match program, and we won the second prize in Barcelona. This project, because oh, we okay. match these two national, these two. Okay, these can you tell me where is this kindergarten? That makes me very curious. One of the biggest villages. In, okay, which I don't know. Near, remember. near the border. So yeah, yeah. And what the kindergarten does? It matches Armenian children with Turkish children. Yes, two architectural students. Mm -hmm. work the same project the same time and after they do the amazing job I think that's wonderful yes. that's wonderful because they work together sometimes uh, my supervisors know it's so dangerous yeah, etc but I say no they are so open the young generation is open to do something new in a, in a way these border conflicts are really uh, like a governmental or military problem but yeah. the people have the and key to yes. solve it. So if we, the people, if we recognize that our neighbors are not, not too bad, they are they just have an interest, yes. just like just, you and me, yeah. we, we can write, we can create a wave of momentum, okay. of optimism, like bringing us together, there, see yeah. if there are synergies. Okay. I never ignore the history, mm -hmm. but, but it's happened. What can we do? Mm -hmm. we, we have to be more stronger, more safe and uh, to work hard so for future. If, you, if you see um, earlier you, you mentioned really like one of the key priorities of Armenians is yeah. be open but yeah. I think that that ties back into this issue <laughs> trying to also like foster new relationships of course. with border countries yeah and I think especially you mentioned the project <laughs> is between Turkey, Armenia. I think as of now it's a, a, an easier pathway than with Azerbaijan. Or uh, how is your perspective on that? Sometimes if they didn't know who is the owner project, maybe they can work <laughs> easily. But what depends on Azerbaijan, it's really hard to have connection with yeah. them. Yes, because we are university and uh, at this level it's really hard to have a some agreement with these two universities.
Okay, then can you please um, explain me how does this program work? Do the Armenian student and the Turkish student physically meet? Yes, physically meet twice. And they start their project for it's six months projects. Mm -hmm. They physically meet, must meet twice and they project, they um, draw the um, um, small part of the garden and when they go, go to this village and they start the build and they come back. Okay, I think it's just an ingenious project. Yeah. And like everyone had a good experience so far. Yes, the they family. leave the Turkish family with their parents. Not they, 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 they the friends were a hospital for them. Uh, the, the hospitality is very, very high, uh, important point for for Turkish students, because they, oh. I'm a Turkish. I live here. Uh, maybe Armenian not so open for us, etc. Oh, okay. Uh, when they live here. And when did it start the program? In 2018, maybe, I don't know. Oh, okay. I, so, so it's running since some yeah. time. And how many students go through it uh, each year? Ten, ten. Okay. Both of yes, ten. ten okay, ten. I mean, this is like really when I talk about future. Yeah. This is a critical project which yeah. I think helps to shape uh, Armenian future and contributes to Armenian yeah. confidence. No, this is truly True. wonderful. <laughs> yes, and they decide to do a children garden project. The students decide to do that because they, they are Armenian and Turkish flags with drag, and mm. they, they both decide to do the kindergarten. Oh, that's, yeah. wonderful. that's wonderful. So, Hermina, like, let me ask you, <laughs> um, what gets this ambitious? Women out of bed every day, what drives you? Because I know that if I help someone, he or she will be happy. I do for them and I believe they can do for me. <laughs> so in a way it's like you get up because you want to spread happiness. Uh, yes, because I want to match someone, startups with mentors, uh, knowledge with students. <laughs> oh, every time I match something. <laughs> So, in a way, you do so much for other people, your friends, family, the community, yeah. strangers, <laughs> you give back continuously. But it makes me wonder, where are you? How do you see your future? What do you do for yourself? Just a happy mama. <laughs> 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 Nothing else. Maybe we work in Armenia in some small villages like uh, some educational program to teach them how to be open, how to learn something new subject. Just I imagine that I'm a teacher in Armenian small villages. <laughs> yep. So you're truly dedicated to your community and yep. your Armenia. Yeah. Hermina, <laughs> it was truly <laughs> an honor to have you here at Faces of Armenia. And I believe you are a great asset <laughs> for your country, your community and your friends. Yes, thank you. And we express our <laughs> thank yous. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much.